What is going on guys? My name is Senna and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the top five things that I wish I knew before I hit Immortal. Knowing these things would have made it way easier for me to climb and be a better player in general. Right before we get into this video though, guys, I stream daily on Twitch over at twitch.tv forward slash Senna VL. The link for that will be in the description and I hope to see you there. I'm very active with my chat there, so if you have a question that you want to ask me, come join up and ask. Anyways guys, with the intro out of the way, let's get straight into the video. The first thing I wish that I knew before before I hit Immortal was how to set up a bait and switch. What I mean by a bait and switch is having one of your teammates go in a corner, basically a one and done spot, and have someone bait for them to wipe out the enemy team. The person who is getting baited for should preferably be Jet, Reyna, Chamber, or any agent that can get out of situations quickly. One of my favorite bait and switch setups is on A long on Haven. What you do for this setup is just simply have a Jet, Reyna, Chamber, anyone that can get out quickly, go play on the cubby on the other side. The person who's doing the baiting can be any agent really, and basically you just want to jiggle and just make sure that the enemies see you and know that you're present. Playing off your teammates in this fashion is really good and I don't see a lot of low elo players doing this. A lot of players who are hard stuck in low ranks have no idea how to play off of their teammates and just all go for solo plays. Solo plays never work and you need to be able to bait your teammates properly. So when the enemy team comes swarming down A long, all they're gonna know is that there's someone jiggling A long. The enemies will be so focused on the guy A long that they won't even think to check the cubby on the right. This should grant the guy in the cubby at least one or two free kills, and the guy who's doing the baiting can re-swing off of that contact and wipe them all out. This is called a ping pong peek and it's really hard to defend against. You can do this in different spots across all the different maps, like on Icebox, B site is a good place to do it on the choke point, and also on bind A short. On a short bind, a peek that I really like to do is have one person tuck into the cubby and then someone tuck right next to them to where they're peeking. The person who's further out takes first contact, gets one, gets out, and they won't even think to check for the second guy. Moving on from this point, the next thing that I wish that I knew early on was how to play anti-flash. I hardly see any players in low ranks play anti-flash, and it makes characters like Breach and Sky who have really powerful flashes get way more value out of their you told them they should. What playing anti-flash means is that you have one person walk up to the choke point, but you have one person stay back and either face against a wall or stay unpeaked from that angle. The person walking up to the choke point is kind of sacrificing themselves. Basically what they're doing is they're walking up to the choke point and holding the angle in case someone decides to dry swing. The person playing anti-flash is staying back just in case a breach, sky, phoenix, or any other flash agent throws out a flash and blinds the guy walking up long. The person who's not flash can swing out and either trade them out or save them. I see this happen way too often in low ranks where five people will just group all up together like a pack and walk up to a choke point, then one sky flash or breach flash and they're all done for. This is a really good way to deal with flashes that I don't see being used enough. The next tip that I have for you guys is silent jumping. Did you know that in Valorant you could actually jump without making any sound? This is super easy to do and I feel like a lot of people know about this but I thought it was still worth mentioning anyways. Basically how you silent jump is what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold your crouch bind, jump, and then let go of crouch while you're in midair. Doing this will make it so that you make absolutely no noise when you land from your fall. This makes jump spotting over crates much more safe. For example, on A site Haven, if you want to jump spot over the box but don't want to make any noise to let people know that you're there, you can use this method to peek this. I do this a lot when I'm solo holding a site and I don't want to make my presence known. The next tip that I wish that I knew before I hit Immortal is how important verticality is. What I mean by verticality is positioning yourself in an area where the enemy has to flick upwards. You can do this on pretty much any map and I love to abuse this. Whenever I'm playing post plant on B site bind, I love playing on top of these different boxes. If you're jet, you can updraft on top of them or if you're sage, you can wall yourself up. There's many different ways to get on top of these different boxes that grant you a huge advantage. From on top of this giant box here, you can fight CT and you can peek elbow from an angle that the enemy Enemy probably won't expect. This is also especially good on ice box because of how many boxes there really are. 
This is how I love to entry on Icebox B site. First thing I do when we're pushing B is I updraft on top of this white box here. Once here, I can jump across to the other crate while clearing all of the close angles. Make sure your sofa is droning or your sky is dogging here too, just in case. Once I make it all the way across, what I like to do from here is updraft on top of yellow and then peek sight to take a fight. Chances are your enemy won't expect you to be all the way up here, so your first fight should be pretty easy to take. If there's no one there, what you can do is you can dash across to the default box and then jump on top of top site and push straight into kitchen. You can now push all the way through kitchen and catch everyone rotating. So while the whole team is thinking that you guys are pushing B, you're already in kitchen waiting to take a fight. For all of you who watched my how to rank up guide, you would know that I mentioned this tip in there, but I thought that it was such a good tip that I had to include it in this video. And remember, this doesn't only work with Jet, you can do it with any agent really. Sage is an especially good agent for this because of her wall. You can use her wall to get on top of so many different things and get the jump off of unsuspecting players. So just remember, this. Next time you're in a game or you're in a post plant situation, just think to yourself, what is the highest position that I could put myself in? Being as high up off the ground as possible makes it so that your enemy has to adjust their crosshair the most, granting you the easiest kill. The fifth and final tip that I have for you guys is to always show presence flank. Let's say the enemies are pushing A and you're playing B. You want to go for a flank, but you notice that they have a chamber or a killjoy or a cypher or someone to watch flank with so you decide not to. This is a bad mistake because the enemies are relying on that util to watch their flank. How many times have you been in a game and you're trying to watch flank and then your teammate says, oh don't worry about that, I have a trip, or don't worry, there's a turret watching that. As a defender, what you're going to want to do is show presence flank. What I mean by showing presence is by tampering with their flank util. Let's say Killjoy has a turret to watch flank. Chances are there isn't going to be someone watching flank if they have util to watch it for them. This makes retaking as a defender really hard because all five players are going to be focused on sight because they know that they don't have to worry about flank. Breaking that util flank will pull a guy off of sight and make them forced to watch flank. Not only this, but it puts that idea in their head that, hey, there could be someone flanking right now. We have nothing to watch it. So next time the enemy team is attacking a site, make sure you go flank and break that util to pull a guy off site. And there you have it. There's five tips that I wish I knew before I hit Immortal. Knowing this information would have made it so much easier for me to climb and be a better player in general. If this video did help you out in any way, don't forget to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you like content like this. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I stream every day on Twitch over at twitch.tv forward slash senavl. Link is in the description. I hope to see you all there and I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.